Hello ladies and gentlemen, Spirit of the Law here. Today's video is all about the Scorpion. Now it's not controversial to say they're certainly used a lot less than some other siege units, which automatically makes them a really good candidate for a closer look. Their big claim to fame is they fire through enemy units and hit ones in behind, which is a little unusual, and it means that they defend choke points really well and are hard for units to approach when you get them in a big enough mass. I've heard lots of different, sometimes conflicting ideas thrown around about which units they're good against, but what it all has in common is it's just based on anecdote. So in this video I'm going to try them against pretty much every unit in the base game before the expansions, see how they all perform against mass scorpions, and then try to work out what are the 10 best and 10 worst units against scorpions. Let's check it out. Let's start by looking at the mechanics of the Scorpion. The bolt moves through 11 tiles, doing full damage to the target unit and half damage to all of the others directly in its line of fire. That's interesting because it's significantly greater than the range of the unit, so you can damage units up to 11 tiles away while only being able to target within 7 or 8, depending on if you have siege engineers or not. One thing to keep in mind when approaching scorpions is being on staggered formation is going to involve taking less of that pass through damage. One other thing about scorpions is they can't fire at units within two tiles, so you want to keep something in front of them, usually halberdiers or champions, to prevent melee fighting. Something weird about that is that they can't target a unit within two tiles, but they can damage it if a bolt passes through, as long as they're aiming at something further away. For this video, I'm just going to be looking at the Conquerors and HD version of the Scorpions, and I realized that they were buffed a bit in the expansions, but I'm just going to sidestep that for this video, as well as how they do against New Forgotten Empire and African Kingdom units. So to test out some units against mass Scorpions, I have a tower defense inspired scenario. I have it set up like a Michi or Black Forest choke point in the post-Imperial Age, and there's going to be a constant stream of units being created by a cycling trigger, and on the other side there's 32 heavy scorpions with siege engineers and a few halberdiers out front as a token meat shield. Now in a real game we'd be refreshing the halberdiers in front to keep our scorpions safe for longer, but the fact of the matter is a very scorpion resistant unit will do well in this test, and a unit that dies easily to the scorpion in this test will tend to do poorly against them across a variety of situations. So now let's run it with a bunch of different units and see what we get. Against a constant stream of Spanish halberdiers, it was just over 170 kills. Halberdiers are typically thought of as not being particularly good against Mass Scorpion, so I would expect this to be one of the better exchanges. In terms of the raw resources, it was 10,200 resources worth of halberdiers lost, compared to about 5,000 resource loss for the blue side. But if we convert the resources using late game market exchange rates, we see the halberdiers are actually cost effective in this exchange and we're only about half the overall economic cost as the heavy scorpion losses. So mass scorpions alone don't look like a perfect counter to a stream of halberdiers. Against champions they get just over half as many kills as they had against the halberdiers, but because of the 20 gold cost of each champion that ended up being a roughly even exchange for the heavy scorpions. With some more halberdiers in front this could definitely become a good fight to take, so maybe surprisingly scorpions on their own aren't a perfect hard counter to champions either. Against goth elite huskarls it's like we might expect, and they only managed about 50 kills since the huskarl pierce armor means they take only 7 damage per shot. Scorpions are definitely not a cost effective counter against a mass of huskarls, which we probably knew anyway, but it's good to verify the setup by checking that. Against World Raiders it's a similar deal, and they're a fast infantry that doesn't get held off as easily as champions. They lost about 65 units, so they ended up being slightly cost effective against the heavy scorpions, but not as much as the elite Huskarls. Trying out Teutonic Knights now, they ended up losing about 90 units. It was a pretty favorable matchup for the scorpions by resources lost, so we're going to have to say that scorpions are a solid counter in that situation. I'll save a bit of time and just show you how they did against some other infantry unique units. 
Looking at it all together, I'd say against infantry, it seems like mass scorpions are good against the slower ones, and do live up to the reputation of being anti-infantry. Though there are quite a few exceptions of fast infantry that close the distance quickly enough that they can overwhelm weakly protected scorpions. For eagle warriors, it depends on which civilization we're talking about. Mayan eagle warriors are a very good counter, and do about as well as elite Haskaras, which makes sense to me since they're both high pierce armor fast units. But the Aztec eagle warriors came out about even with the champion. They have fewer losses of course, but at 50 gold per unit, that adds up really fast. Now let's take a look at how some archer units do. The fully upgraded Viking Arbalest didn't do very well, and nor did the Chikunu, which had about an even exchange, but not one that I'd recommend. Even the plumed archer didn't end up being very good because of its short range, so you can get a lot of scorpions firing at a relatively smaller number of archers. The longbowmen were a big exception because they're able to snipe them at long range, so they did very well, and were in fact the best counter yet. Elite skirmishers were a bit of a slow grind and not as good as the halberdiers, but they were cost effective, which is good to know, since this is definitely a matchup that I could see happening in a choke point. At the same time, the hand cannoneers were the worst exchange of any unit, and I think that's mostly due to their slightly smaller range, their low HP and high cost, so they had a lot working against them. Overall with archers, it seems like short range archers do poorly against scorpions, but with long range like an elite longbowman, they can become an extremely efficient counter. And elite skirmishers technically work because of their dirt cheat cost. Now let's move on to some cavalry units, which are traditionally thought of as the siege counter. Paladins are extremely effective, as we might have guessed, but it might be a little bit over-exaggerated in this scenario since it's hard to keep a flow of paladins this strong in a real game, and there's certainly a lot being created in this setup that I have. The Frank Paladin did a bit better than the regular one, but surprisingly not way better. I think most of the kills are by the halberdiers up front, so against a pure scorpion army, paladins are probably the way to go. That being said, Hazars look even better than paladins because they only cost food. In actual fact, you need a surprisingly large number of Hazars to overwhelm scorpions in a choke point, and you can expect to lose about four times as many units as you kill in that situation. Cataphracts also did quite well, and I think trample damage probably had something to do with that. The Cavaliers were not very effective, surprisingly, and in situations like this, the Paladin being able to take even just one more hit makes them significantly better in this situation. It's weird to say, but I wouldn't recommend using Cavaliers against Mass Scorpion based on this test. It's just too much gold to make it a good exchange, even with a minimal number of Halberdiers out front. Cavalry Archers are kind of a toss-up, and Micro could probably help this out, but overall it's not a great exchange. Mangadai though are the exception to the Cavalry Archer rules, and they have a bonus versus Scorpions, which I should mention is removed in the HD expansions, but for the base game they're a really good counter. With Mamelukes, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go, because they do have high melee damage, which should be good against Scorpions, but they also have to be very close and cost a lot of gold, so as it turns out they didn't end up being a great choice. Conquistadors are also not a good exchange. Generally, anything that does pierce damage seems to be underwhelming against the scorpions, probably having to do with their fairly high pierce armor. That being said, war wagons seem to do okay. More halberdiers in front would neutralize them pretty easily, but in this test, war wagons did hold their own against the mass scorpions. In a big surprise to me, the Tarkins ended up being more cost effective than the Paladin in this test, and obviously by extension, much better than Cavaliers. That's not one I would have predicted as being a particularly strong counter to Scorpions, but there you go. Now Elephants, I think, is going to be a controversial one. Scorpions do have bonus damage against Elephants, but I found Elephants are too tanky to be taken down, and still need 34 direct hits. Even having double the number of Scorpions, they can't handle Elephants. Maybe with Halberdiers it's a good idea, but the Halberdiers in that situation are doing most of the heavy lifting, not the Scorpions. I know some people won't like this result, and even I would have predicted Heavy Scorpions should excel in a choke point against any slow unit, but even outnumbering the War Elephants 4 to 1, the Heavy Scorpions had more than double the resources lost, and that's not what I would call an effective counter. With Camels, it seems to come down to which civilization you're playing, and in general they're not particularly Pierce Armor resistant, with Persian Heavy Camels coming out about equal exchange with the Scorpions, but when you use Saracen Heavy Camels, they perform similar to Cataphracts and Mayan Eagle Warriors. We seem to have another example where a boost in HP leads to a way better 
outcome against Scorpions. Now let's see them in action against some other Siege. I'd say Onagers are my favourite counter to Heavy Scorpions, and in this case it's not even a comparison. There's not even much to say about this one, and it's hands down the best counter yet. Arguably Bombard Cannons are an even better counter since they can fire from well out of the Scorpion's range, and even with the AI using them pretty ineffectively, they still manage to dominate the Scorpions. Aztec Monks were technically quite effective, though you would need AI level micro to make it work out this well. Similar to Bombard Cannons and Elite Longbows, whenever you have something that has 12 range or more, it's going to do really well against Scorpions. So that's pretty much every unit in the game up to the Conqueror's expansion. I thought I'd try them out against buildings as well, and it turns out they're not particularly great. They do a tiny bit of bonus damage, but against an Imperial Age Barracks, they do 8 damage per shot. And at that rate, it would take about 18 minutes to destroy it. Compare that to a capped ram that can destroy a barracks in about one minute, and I wouldn't say the scorpion is really an anti-building unit. Before I reveal the master list of the best and worst units against scorpions, there are a couple of civilizations with bonuses that I want to mention. The first is the Celts, whose scorpions fire 20% faster and have 50% more HP. Rather than redo all of the earlier tests, let's just say they'll perform notably better. For example, against generic champions in terms of resources lost, it went from a roughly equal exchange of 2,840 gold up to 6,532 gold. So in this test at least, Celts seem to do about twice as well against infantry. Hazars also went up from 784 to 1,120, which still makes Hazars a very good exchange. So it's not that the Celt scorpions in a choke point can't be countered. Mongols also have a unique tech that makes the scorpions move 50% faster, which doesn't factor at all into their combat effectiveness in this sort of choke point test, but does make them more mobile in a real game situation. The last one to mention is Chinese have plus 4 attack on their scorpions, which is balanced out a bit by the fact that they don't have siege engineers, so they only end up with 7 range. Against champions, they perform much better than the usual scorpions, but not quite as well as the Celts. Both were certainly a big step up though. So that was a ton of information and numbers, and rather than focus on which units were cost effective, here's just a summary of the 10 best units to use against mass scorpions, as well as the 10 worst units. So maybe give that a look over and see if there's any surprises for you. In general, the trend is what I hear most people saying, and slow moving infantry is bad, and cavalry and other siege tend to do quite well. Keep in mind that 62% of the units tested ended up being cost effective against scorpions under this scenario as I set up, which was supposed to be ideal conditions for scorpions to really show what they could do. And that might be a factor in why they seem to be so rarely used. There just seem to be a lot of effective counters. So hopefully this video helps you out next time you're wondering about if you should make scorpions or what to do next time you see them. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.